I've always been <laughs> I've always been interested in a topic. Uh, after I completed my degree in law in University of Malaya, Malaysia, I actually wasn't sure if I want to be a lawyer. I know for sure that I want to help people. And um, and for this purpose, I went to uh, do some human rights trainings abroad. And when I come back, I joined the Human Rights Commission of Malaysia and I was there for five years. And after that, I was with the uh, UNHCR uh, dealing with asylum seekers. Um, and my my career path, if you would call it, or you know, the, the way I've always been working on human rights issues, but more in a, as a generalist, I don't really specify into a, a specific area. Uh, but then when I heard about this opportunity with APT, uh, to me it's an it's 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 really um, something that I find important because um, we are dealing with one of the most um, heinous crime against against human beings, um, against humanity. So uh, that's how I come about to you know to to join uh, the APT uh, because I've, I I and I also wanted to see and to to see how I can continue uh, as I say helping people. I think my premise from the start has always been helping people, uh, and yeah, that's that's how I started. Uh, I think it goes, I could say, honestly, it has both uh, positive and I wouldn't say negative, but more work in progress. <laughs> um, I think it, it makes me, I think it makes me be a bit more considerate of others. Considerate is not the best word to describe this, but I think... I learned to be a more empath empathetic person in my work. Um, I think we need more empathy in the world. Um, and it always humbled me to meet people in my work and, you know, getting my uh, motivation revived. I, there are da days where you are down because of what's happening in the world and you really think you want to stop and then you met really uplifting people in this field that that really gave them give their everything you know and it kind of revived your momentum and you want to continue so i think in terms of i think building me as a person i i grow up as a person a lot with my work um but then when you're working with a topic as as serious and as grave as human rights you i think you need to also create a balance so that you won't consume your your yourself um, I think you've heard of the risk of, you know, suffering from burnout or stress, um, you know, among social workers or among human rights activists. And, and this is real. It, this is a real problem. And I think that we as human rights defenders or human rights activists should not be ashamed to admit this. Um, look, the kind of work that we're doing is, is not easy. You, you see really horrible things on a daily basis. Um, but as, at the same time, I think we, we can also discuss properly like what kind of support that can be given to human rights defenders. So I always believe that, um, yeah, like it, at the same time, I need to also learn to take care of myself more because if I want to continue doing this work for the next years, the next years to come, uh, <laughs> I have to have the right mind and the right physical health as well to, to continue. So. I think that's that's how you know I see my work is impacting uh, on my personal life. Um, yeah, uh, I have a small daughter at the moment, twelve years old. I would want uh, to leave her a world that you know where there is still respect, you know, for each other and appreciation for each other. Uh, a world where she can be herself and stay true to herself no matter what. And I think in that sense, that means a world, to, to come to that world, I think it's a world where human rights and rule of law are being respected. Um, so I think that in a way motivate me as well um, to, you know, to, to keep going in the future. Um, and 
yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think my maternal instinct comes out a bit on that sense. But I also, yeah, I also think that um, you, I, and I, I like this analogy, like I'm, I'm just planting this, the, the, the seed now. Um, it's not my tree. It's a tree that I plant for everyone who needs the shade. But if I'm no longer here, I hope that others can continue, you know, um, nurturing, cultivating the tree. So one day the tree can provide shade for everyone that needs it. So I think this is the, the work of human rights. Like you don't really see, if you see the implications or the effect right away, it's really great. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> but as you know, in this work, sometimes it takes a long while for you to see a small change. Um, and it's a change nevertheless, and it's important nevertheless. So yeah, I, I, that's, that's how I perceive my work in the present and what I hope for in the future. I just want to share one small story, just to just reiterate that yes, I think in the, human rights, in the human rights world, hope must die last. <laughs> That's what I believe. I, I remember attending this uh, panel discussion in the region. I, maybe I shouldn't tell where or what, but one of the panelists is a wife to a person who disappeared and, you know, uh, because of because of the husband's work um, and advocacy. Uh, so yeah, so the husband disappeared for years and he, she has been fighting. And on the panel are also other people, human rights activists. And, um, but when, when it comes to talking, when, when the answer was, oh, sorry, when the question was asked, uh, who on the panel believe, somebody in the audience asked, who in the panel believe that there's still a chance to change the mindset of the law enforcement. There's, a, there's still you know, a chance for things to be reformed in the country. Despite the fact that the rest might not be so convinced with the, with the chance, these women who suffered through all actually stood up and said, I believe that change is possible. And to me, for someone who gone through everything and still can stood up and say that, just speaks loudly of you know what you are capable of if 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 you keep on going and, and doing what you know you can do for, for for the human rights. So to me, this story always remind me that you know I'm I'm a total nobody. I'm just you know part of this big movement, and um, everyone is giving their their best. So everyone is giving, you know, whatever they can. So in that sense, um, yeah, I still remember to today that when I saw her, I said, yeah, hope must die last. <laughs>